Hello there, eighth graders, and welcome to, let's see, week three, day two uh, of our online platform. Uh, getting there, still getting confused of the days because we record in advance, but uh, like right now, it's Saturday. And yeah, you're viewing this either late Monday night, otherwise on Tuesday. This is Tuesday's lesson. So uh, still getting me thrown off, but otherwise. Um, so anything news, uh, newsworthy or earth-shaking happens between now and then, I don't mention it on the video that you're now watching, it's because I'm recording it on Saturday. It's even before Easter. Though we'll, we'll be pretending that Easter has come and gone as the prayers and devotions are based on that. And with that said, let's get right to that. All right, so screen sharing, doing things a little bit differently today. All right, so I liked this one. It's a beautiful picture of uh, an Easter lily. And our verse today, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So what great hope do we have? I mean, amidst all this craziness, we know that our hope is in the Lord because he has given us the ultimate thing we need, uh, eternal life through him. So again, cling to that and don't let uh, faith slip through your fingers and the hope of eternal life either. All right, on that note, let's say our prayer today. I haven't gotten any new requests for you, so the prayer is a little different, but the requests are the same. Let us pray with thought, boys and girls. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We worship you, O Christ, and thy holy resurrection we him and glorify. For thou art our God, and we know none other beside thee, and we call upon thy name. O come, all ye faithful, let us worship Christ's holy resurrection. For behold, through the cross, joy hath come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, we him his resurrection. For having endured crucifixion, he hath destroyed death by death. And having done all for us on the cross, he invites us to lay our petitions before him. For the coronavirus to be eradicated and for the people who have contracted it to get better, including Karina's neighbor. For our healthcare workers who work with those infected with this disease for all essential workers who are at greater risk of exposure to COVID-19, for our families to get along and for everyone to have the essentials they need, and for people in hospitals or nursing homes who cannot have their families visit them, like Mrs. Neal's mother. All this we pray in thy name, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. All right, now rather than just focusing on me for this next little bit while I'm reading to you, I will let you look at that much prettier picture than I, than I am. So uh, just a quick thing out of a textbook that we have from school, all right, our elements of language. I thought it was kind of cleverly put. So I want you to again think visually, so maybe clean, close your eyes and imagine this. Think of the word investigator. Do you see someone in a Sherlock Holmes hat slinking around with a magnifying glass? The title investigator applies to many people, and it soon will be to you, not just famous detectives. Scientists investigate plants and animals. Journalists investigate possible news stories. You investigate when you want to know about an interesting person or event. Often, investigators publish what they have learned in informative texts such as books, articles, or websites. Informative texts, texts provide readers, viewers, or listeners with new information. You see informative texts based on research in many places, in magazines, on television, or on the internet, for example. These research pieces help you satisfy your curiosity and learn more about your world. So I guess you know the topic for today. Yes, it's your research paper. And today we're talking about just that, researching for your research paper. So on that note, let's see. I gotta move that because it's in the way. Um, I'm gonna go right into, this was a really appropriate, I thought. And so I'm gonna get click into this. And all right, so you have to do research. Now what? We'll watch a couple slides of this. You should have already done this. Narrow down your topic. Ident identify related ideas, again, 
kicked off your list, hopefully, but if not, or if I had you go back to the drawing board, make sure you follow these things. We'll just review them briefly. Identify specific people, events, places. For example, your teacher wants you to research World War II. Well, imagine that. I do, specifically, European side of things in, with the Holocaust. So you Google the word World War II. How many results did you get? I mean, probably billions, it's crazy. Millions for sure. There's no way to do research on the whole entire war. Narrow it down to World War II. Europe, D-Day. So three different ways to narrow it down so far. Now Google D-Day. How many result, results did you get? Fewer or more than World War II? Well, it should be fewer. Could you narrow D-Day down, down even further? How? What other terms or are related to D-Day? Well, there's people, places, dates, events, and battles. Now go to Google and search for Normandy plus D-Day. See that little plus sign? That's important. We'll talk about that more in a moment. How many search results were returned? Can you tell which are reliable? We're going to be talking about that, about that more as well. There are lots of different types of websites, and with technology today, anyone, and I do mean anyone, can make a website. Learn to distinguish reliable from unreliable and only use reliable sites, which is why you will have a works cited page so I can check those sites to see if you are factually based when you're doing your paper. So .com, a .com is a commercial site typically sponsored by a company or for the purpose of making money, probably advertising of some sort. .gov is a government site typically provided for informational purposes, so a little bit better. .edu, an educational site typically provided for educational purpose, possibly even better. But keep in mind, some edu sites have student input. And so again, you have to weigh, is the student on, on target with what he or she is saying? So be careful I, I, who, who is on the EDU site. .org, .org, an organization site typically provided for informational purposes of that particular organization. And a lot of times it's nonprofit, but again, there could be an agenda. In fact, for all of these, there could be an agenda of some sort. So you have to be critical thinkers and weed through all of that. There are others, .net, .mil, but these are the most common that we've just gone, gone over. So look over the website to determine if the site looks professionally made, and importantly, who sponsors the page, what agenda might they have. And of course, be cautious of Wikipedia. It's a great jumping off uh, site to go to to get some ideas, maybe how to narrow down your search, what's out there, but don't cite it or use it um, because again, it's too changeable. All right. So try this out when you're searching. If you're researching Normandy and D-Day, but want a specific website that's from, say, an organization, you go to Google and type Normandy, that little plus sign, dday.org, okay? Well, now the only results you receive are web pages provided by organizations whose web pages end in .org. So that's a neat little trick. I didn't know this, I had to do this research that I'm showing you now. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, you're researching General Eisenhower and D-Day, but only one government web pages. Well, now you go Eisenhower, the little plus sign, dday.gov. Now the only results you receive are web pages provided by the government whose web pages end in .gov. All right, so it can get confusing about primary and secondary sources. So let's see if we can figure those out. First, I'm gonna get out of this screen and go to this one. All right, so primary and secondary sources, what are they? Primary sources provide a first-hand account of an event or time period and are considered to be authoritative. They represent original thinking, reports on discovery, discoveries or events, or they can share new information. Often these sources are created at the time the events occurred, but they can also include sources that are created later. They are usually the first formal appearance of original research. Secondary sources involve analysis, synthesis, interpretation, or evaluation of those primary sources. They often attempt to describe or explain primary resources. Uh, scholarly journals, although generally considered to be secondary sources, often contain articles on very specific subjects and may be the primary source of information on new developments. 
primary and secondary categories are often not fixed and depend on the study of research you are undertaking. Um, so we'll get into more of that later. But some examples of that, primary sources, examples would be diaries, correspondence, ship logs, like we had with the Diary of Anne Frank. It would be considered a primary source. Um, original documents, you know, like birth certificates, trial transcripts, biographies, autobiographies, even better, I'm telling my own story, a manuscript, interviews, speeches, oral histories, even our book right now with Corey Ten Boom, it was actually done in an inter interview style format, apparently in her um, kitchen. Case law, legislation, regulations, constitutions, government documents, journal articles, reporting new research or findings directly, uh, creative artworks, literature, again, first source. Then you can, uh, and then there's some sources you can found them. You go to these places. Secondary sources, again, are part uh, analysis, interpretation, or a re restatement of primary sources, and sometimes are considered to be persuasive. So you gotta be careful of those. So again, they might have an agenda trying to lead your thought to a certain conclusion. Uh, examples of secondary sources include journal articles that comment on or analyze the research, textbooks, yes, textbook, or they are a secondary source, not primary, dictionaries, encyclopedias, books that interpret or analyze, political commentary, definitely secondary and a lot of times persuasive in nature, political commentary, biographies, because again, if I'm writing a story about someone, am I staying completely factual? First of all, it's still secondary because it's not an autobiography about myself, but also it can be, I have a certain bent, I have a leaning, like I like this person that I'm writing about, so I have my, um, a bent on the way I talk. Am I going to be favorable for the individual I'm writing on? Dissertations, newspaper, editorial, opinion pieces, criticism of literature, arts, works, or music, which those don't really pertain to us. So just want to make sure you knew, again, what those things were so we could go over that. All right, so I thought this was a fun thing to do. All right, so when you're trying to research, you think, oh, well, it's on the internet, it must be accurate. Well, I like this one. Show them Save the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus. Okay, so a great place to start your discussion about smart searching is to take your students, you guys, to the Pacific Tree Octopus website. After all, if it's on the web, it must be true, right? Yeah, no. Um, so let's look at that site. I thought it was pretty entertaining. So here is the site. Help save the endangered Pacific Northwest tree octop octopus from extinction. So here is this great looking article. It has little tabs we can go to, help tabs, uh, facts, you know, frequently asked question tab. It has sightings of the, this particular tree octopus. Look at that. It looks so real, right? Let's go back to the uh, about site, about page. All of that looks pretty darn real. This is actually a, satiric, a satirical piece. It is all satire. If you guys have ever watched Saturday Night Live or anything, a lot of satire on comedy shows like that. This is satire. And here is, where do octopus belong? Or octopi rather, plural. They belong in the ocean, not in a tree, guys. This is on the web. You can go check it out for yourself. You can Google that spot that's on top of the page right there. But it, again, it is satire. This is not for real. So you do need to be discerning. So based on that, what we just discussed, going through narrowing down and finding reputable sources, you're going to be assigned that you have to have a minimum of three uh, sources for your essay. Don't really need more than three. It's just a three body paragraph. You have your intro paragraph, your concluding paragraph. You just have three paragraphs. So you don't really need more than three, but you are required to have three. And on the main three, you will need to do these papers. Don't worry, it's not due till Friday, so you can do your 20 minutes on the first one, 20 minutes on the next and the second one, 20 minutes on the third one, the third day. So you've got time to do this. So you're going to have to assess a website. So website title. Now again, it might be the website where there's a book. So again, this is gonna be a different for you depending on what you're doing. So what's the title of the website? What's the URL? That's again, you're copying and pasting what's ever at the top of the screen down here. 
Um, and I want it specific, exactly where you are, not the general site so that I'm having to hunt and peck. Uh -uh. I'm going to send it right back to you if you do that. So the specific page you're on. Well, what clues does the URL give? Is it a .com, a .org, a .edu, uh, a .california, so it's country specific, or a .gov? So check one of those. Again, it should be probably one of those because it's going to be more reputable. All right. Um, you know, if it's other, you can uh, write that in. But otherwise, just highlight one of these after you type in the two at the top. What is the purpose of this page, this website? So again, check which one. Is it a personal web page? Yeah, I'm not so sure I want that for a research paper. Is it a company or organization, educational or research website, and so on. So check what it is. Is this website mostly facts, mostly opinions, a mix of both? If it's mostly opinions, I'm not going to want it. So again, it should be either mostly facts or maybe a mix of both, but that means you're going to have to be more discerning as to which is which for your paper. Can you identify the author? Again, who wrote it? You know, who's supposed to be the expert of this particular website? And then who is it? Can you find the author's qualifications or expertise? What makes this author somebody you are willing to cite for your factual research paper? So think about that. And then you're going to take uh, now take the crap test. Yes, I just said the crap test. <laughs> so you'll see what we're talking about. You're going to see C for current, R for relevant, A for accurate, another A for authoritative, and P for purpose. See the crap test. So hey, have fun with that. Anyway, yes, is is it up to date? A on a scale. You're not marking no or yes. You're marking from one to 10. If you mark no or yes, I'll know you did not pay attention to this video or didn't watch it at all. You're marking one to 10. How up to date is it? Is it way up there, a 10, that it's like, oh, there, there's um, dates cited on this page as recent as last month. And then great, mark that, you know, check back. How recently has it been updated? Okay, so check that. If there's no date at all, check this. And I may be a little sketchy on that if there's no date at all. All right, is information relevant? So again, is it relevant to what you're researching? If you're re researching Normandy and it is about Normandy, great, go for it. But if you're researching Normandy and it's about uh, something um, in Japan, then not so much. Yes, World War II is in Japan as well, but your paper is not supposed to be, and if you're studying Normandy, that battle, then again, it's not relevant. So is it how relevant? Is it really up there, or is it just medium, or is it down low? All right, is the website accurate? Is it well-maintained? There's not, like if you click on one of the links that it gives you, does it actually go to a live page, or does it say it's not, they can't find it? All right, so you can do the rest here on your own because of the fact that I'm running over time and I'll get in trouble. So that's it. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys.